Hello, Community Alliance Church family and friends. My name is Tom Laird, and I'm the executive director of, with the Christian Counselors Collaborative. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Today, I'd like to share a little bit about the topic of situational depression. And sometimes that can look a little bit like being brokenhearted or crushed in spirit. My reason for wanting to share this is that I've spent the last 29 years of my life in, in ministry counseling and interacting with people, many of whom have struggled with the situational depression. And right now with this pandemic, I believe that it's really perfect soil for folks who may struggle with the situational depression. Depression is referred to as the common cold of mental illness, with over 16 million people in America diagnosed with a major depressive disorder. And we're not going to, in our video here, get into a lot of the elements that contribute to someone having a depression. But I do want to speak to situational depression because it's very applicable to our circumstance. The situational depression is brought on by loss, by stress, or by trauma. And loss, stress, and trauma occurred prior to the pandemic in many people's lives. But it's also added, there's various losses and stressors that have occurred during this time. It could be the loss of a loved one the loss of a job, a divorce, or it could be multiple minor losses that sort of build up and lead to what Proverbs 13, 12 refer to as hope being deferred and making the heart grow sick, that repetitive losses uh, lead to a sort of a downcast spirit and sometimes to depression. It also could be stress of financial stress, uh, unemployment at this time, or it could be stress of working so hard that uh, it's very, very difficult just to take care of all the balls that are in the air. And of course, there is the stress of the COVID-19 and the social distancing and the various things that we're now all dealing with. And then as well, there can be trauma. Uh, with a situational depression, it could be mild or it could be moderate or severe. A mild situational depression uh, may just, the symptoms would be less intense and there would be less of them. And it might look like someone who's sort of lost their air in their tires or their wind in their sail. But then the other end of the spectrum, someone who's severely depressed could be an individual who has a difficult time getting out of bed, difficult time functioning, and is severely struggling with a loss of hope. So this morning or this afternoon, I want to share with you just four suggestions, four reminders that if you're bumping up against uh, feeling downcast in your spirit or depression or broken, broken hearted, there's four reminders for you. Number one, first of all, it's very important to engage God. Engage God at the level that you can engage with him. If, if, if it's free and easy for you to have time of uh, prayer and time of reading the scriptures and, and the, the spiritual disciplines are going well for you, that's wonderful. But oftentimes people who are dealing with some measure of depression, uh, because of loss of energy, loss of interest, and loss of desire, they have a difficult time with that spiritual discipline. So if you're in that camp, if you can spend five minutes in prayer or five minutes reading the scriptures, that's a good thing because you've turned your chair towards God. If that feels like that's too much, then perhaps it's, it's to listen to some worship music. If that as well feels like it's too much, then maybe to get online and look at some prayers. I remember years ago counseling a man who had lost hope in God and really was severely depressed. And he just hadn't prayed, he said, in over a year. And I wrote out a prayer for him, and I suggested, why don't you go home, and even though you're sort of feeling dead inside, communicate this, read this to God. And God used that, coupled with a number of other things, to really uh, shift this man's life pretty dramatically. The second thing is to know that God will use the passage of time to bring healing. God will use the passage of time to bring healing. There is a saying that says, time heals all wounds. You've probably heard that saying. Uh, time does heal in some cases, it does heal wounds, but it doesn't heal all wounds. And I think a more accurate uh, statement would be to say God uses the passage of time to heal all process wounds. We often see this with support groups here at, here at our church, divorce care or uh, grief share. People enter into the group and then 13 weeks later, uh, they're, 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 their loved one is still gone or they're, they're still divorced, but they're in a different place. God has used time in the processing of their hurt to bring some healing. Uh, a couple of scriptures that come to my mind here, Lamentations 3, uh, 21 through 22 says, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. 
Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Third, I would suggest that you do not go alone with this. Isolation is perfect soil for further depression. It's also perfect soil for a negative, further negative thinking that can fuel depression. And additionally, it's perfect soil for uh, the attack of spiritual enemies who have come to kill, rob, and destroy. Because when a person's dealing with depression, the, the enemy of their soul loves to come along and sort of rub a person's nose in that. He is called the accuser of the brethren. And so he wants people to not only be dealing with some depression, but also to be dealing with shame and guilt over feeling this way. And that's, that's important to be mindful of. It's a very dangerous place to be if you are moderately or severely depressed, and the only voice that you're listening to is your voice. That's, that's not a good place to be in. One of the takeaways, I think, from this pandemic uh, is uh, how much we need one another. Uh, certainly how much we need God, but how much we need one another. We are the body of Christ, and there are numerous places throughout the scripture where it talks about encouraging one another, loving one another, praying for one another, serving one another. And we've benefited, we've benefited from that during this time. And if you're struggling with a situational depression, it's important to access people in your life, whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend, or it's someone in the body of Christ who you can talk to. It's, it's a mistake to attempt to go this alone. Lastly, uh, don't quit. I think uh, when someone's dealing with a, a mild depression or any type of depression, dealing with feeling brokenhearted, uh, crushed in spirit, one of the main words from God is don't quit. Don't throw the towel in on leaning into God. Don't throw the towel in on leaning into life. Uh, one of the words, descriptions of the Christian life in the Bible is it refers to it as a race. And that race is not a uh, sprint. It's really a marathon. And uh, what's required in a marathon is endurance and stick to and perseverance. When I was in my 20s, I ran a few marathons. And I remember the first one that I ran, I reached what folks refer to as sort of the wall in mile 19 or 20. And I was running through the eastern suburbs of Pittsburgh. And I remember thinking to myself, I just can't, I don't even think I can take another step here. And there was someone on the sidelines, a woman who would just notice that, saw my number and kept yelling out encouragement to me. And it shook me a little bit. It reminded me I can do this. And so I thought at that point, I'm going to get to Negley Avenue, then I'm going to get to Penn Avenue. And eventually I was able to finish, finish the marathon. When we're struggling with a situational depression or feeling brokenhearted, uh, we need to just keep doing the next right thing and keep moving forward one step at a time. So by way of review, Psalm 34, verse 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. If you're struggling at all with any situational depression, any feelings at that level, remember, uh, engage God, number one. Number two, God will use the passage of time to help bring healing. Three, don't go it alone. And four, don't quit. Uh, when I was a little boy in my home here, my mother introduced me to a poem that she had on her, our refrigerator. And she had gone through her own struggles in life and really had pressed through those struggles. And the title of this poem was Don't Quit. So I'd like to close by reading two lines of it. When things go wrong as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of clouds of doubt. And you never can tell just how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. Have a great day serving Christ.